A great sales trainer once said that people buy for emotional reasons and then justify that decision with logic. So if we take as our premise that in many ways a job interview is in fact a sales process and that you are there to sell yourself as being the right candidate, then there's a lot that we can learn from this process. How can we evoke emotion in the interviewer and provide plenty of logic to back it up as well? Well, that's the subject of this short video. Hello, my name is Stephen Wright. I'm a career coach here at Career Mentor, and we help high-performing financial services professionals make their next smart career move. In an ordinary interview, the interviewer will have an understanding as to what it is that the role that you're interviewing for is to achieve and how that will then play into where the business is going. They will have, therefore, a view as to the future of that business. They'll have a, a future vision, if you like. And what they're there to do is to understand how you may well fit with what it is that they're looking for to achieve the things that they've got in mind and therefore they're in the evaluation mode. If we can help them with that evaluation and help them into an understanding that they move into their imagination, which therefore evokes emotion, well, that's the core of what we're trying to achieve. Let me give you some more specifics and when you can actually do this as well. If you have any idea about the ideas that I have on interviews, you'll understand that I believe that there are a number of separate and distinct phases in an interview, and we'll just talk about the first two. The first one is where we are at the opening, and you have an opportunity here to pre-frame the interview, to set the context for, for the interview from your perspective, that you are there to understand what this is all about, understand what it is that they're trying to achieve, and therefore looking towards the future, and then explore the possibilities, explore whether or not you're the right candidate. So we can certainly use this in pre-framing the interviewer. The second way that we can do this is in the first match. And the first match is really understanding what it is that the interviewer is looking for and then matching it with what it is that you're capable of achieving. And the way in which we can do that is first of all, in order to understand what they're looking for, we may have got this from the job spec or from previous interviews that we've done or from the recruiter, but we want to understand ourselves what this person sitting in front of us right now believes is the future vision of this particular position, of the business, and the impact that they're hoping the right candidate will have. And therefore, when you match your understanding of what they're looking for with what you can do by giving examples of things that you've done in the past, and then very importantly, taking that and relating it to the future vision of what it is that the interviewer is looking for. So that may, may look like this. It, you may be able to say, well, I'm able to do this, I did this, um, and I achieved this and the impact of it was this in the past. Can you see how that is going to relate to the things that you're looking for in this particular role? Or in what way would that help the, the achievement of the goals that your business has in mind? So by asking these things, by making these kind of statements, you can take your achievements in the past, you can relate them to the future vision of the interviewer, you're providing plenty of logic by the examples that you've given, but because you're taking the interviewer into the future, you are therefore evoking their imagination and therefore their, their emotion as well. I hope, that's, I hope that's clear, it's a little bit quick, but it's taking it from the past into the future is the core of what we're talking about here. The final thing to say with this, of course, is that we want to be as persuasive and influential as salesmen of ourselves as we can be, but of course we do not want to cross that line into anything that be, could be possibly construed as being manipulation. And the reason why we're not going to cross that line is for two reasons. First is that we are, are only interested in having a win-win. In other words, a win for the interviewer because you are indeed the right candidate for the role. You're just being very persuasive about that. But also a win for yourself because this is the right role for you. If neither is the case, then we back right off. We are looking genuinely for that win-win. And the second reason why we don't cross that line into what could be thought of as being manipulation is that we're being entirely truthful in everything we say. There's no hyperbole, there's no exaggeration, there's no untruths. All the examples, all the facts and dates and examples that you're giving are, ba are absolutely factual and you're being completely straight in the way in which you're uh, explaining the things that you've done in the past and the impact that you've had. 
So I hope that clears up that point. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, then welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button as well. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, then please do uh, hit that like button and share this with anybody who you think might find it useful as well. I'll be putting the blog that I wrote about this in the comments below. And thanks very much.